we should instead maybe teach the men that are not as successful with women to be more well-rounded, to attain just as much success. And they will have more success, way more success, because then it would lead to more of a longevity and more families in the black community, because we see what black women are attracted to. And black women are attracted to the future type, because I mean- Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. So, you're in a relationship with an excellent man based on the time I've spent with him. Um, what was your journey to getting to the point where, or let me put it like this, to becoming the woman who was able to attract him? That's a loaded question. Load it up. <laughs> okay. I think first thing first would be my listening skills and my ability to receive information that maybe I might have rejected before because I thought maybe I knew it all. I know how to get a man. I know. <laughs> I've never had a problem getting a man. Men are coming on to me. But I didn't know the difference between getting a man and maybe getting a good man and the man that I actually wanted, you know? I think that was the key differentiator. And I think it was also being receptive to listening to the men around me. Um, I think also having that idea in the back of my mind that men don't know what they're talking about. Mm. Um, oh, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that prevented me from, from listening to the information um, that I was getting from men. When, if I look back, the information that I became receptive to, re to um, getting at the time when we were just talking, I was getting this, this information years ago. I didn't value it as much. Um, I just figured I know what I'm doing. You can't tell me shit. You know, I can just open up my DMs <laughs> and men are there. There's a flood of men there. There's no shortage of men. That idea never came to my head. There's no shortage of good men. Um, I didn't think there was a shortage of, of quality men either. I didn't think there was a shortage of high value men. Um, that was one of the big thing that I learned from the manosphere space that kind of clicked in my head that, okay, there's a lot of men, but are they really options if you don't want them? Mm -hmm. Are they really options if they're not the type of men that you see your sons being? You know, yeah. a lot of the men that I was around or that I feel like that um, I was attracting or a better word would say that um, I was keeping around me wasn't men that I saw that I wanted my sons to be. And I, I think I think that's a that's a that's a sticking point. And I want us to stay here for a second because, you know, very, because this conversation is exclusively for me, it's about black men and black women. Yeah. And what's tough sometimes talking to black women is that I think black women are the sexiest women on earth. They're the most physically attractive women on earth. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think because they don't have a hard time getting attention, mm -hmm. they conflate that with retention. 
So they can get a man easy, but they can't keep one. You know, it's kind of like the dude who always gets a job, but he can't keep a job. So like he never actually reaches his full potential as far as income. So as a woman, why do you think when you were younger and other women as well, confuse attention? I have 50 men in my DMs with or even I have 50 high value men in my DMs with I can attract and retain that caliber of man and inspire him to take a relationship to the next level. Why do you think there's that confusion? I didn't know the difference until I turned 29. <laughs> um, and I know many women around me didn't know the difference either until I would say a year ago. It never, It never came to mind that a man coming to me to talk to me is just coming to me to have sex with me. Of course, you, you think that, but your ego prevents you from Accepting it. fully processing that fact. We all want to be loved and we all think that we're deserving of the highest form of love. So I think that all women think that they're, hot, they're the hot shit. Right. And we all think that I'm I'm the light of your life. Like without me, you're good as dead. We all think that about men. Right. Um, so even if it doesn't work out, we're not thinking, oh, that's because he was just here for pussy. We just label it as, oh, he's a player. Oh, he wasn't ready. Oh, um, I'm too good for him. Oh, um, you know, I, he, I didn't want to keep him, you know. I'm single by choice. I'm single by, or I'm single by choice. Um, it's always, it's, it's the man's fault, right? Why they're not around um, in the first place. So how could we process the difference between um, retention and you know, being able to get the man in the first place. We, we don't process that at all. That didn't come to my mind at all until I turned 29 and I started to watch Kevin Samuels. Then I think that's when I begin to understand, oh, okay. The reason why there, might, there may have not been um, the success that I wanted in some relationships was because Maybe the guy wasn't there for the same thing that I wanted in the first place. So I, I think you brought up something very interesting earlier. Um, and and I, I've talked about this. It's something I'm suspicious of. I, I'm not going to say I'm 100 percent clear on it yet. But you talked about how most women have been programmed to think less of men. Like that's your default setting to, to think men are less intelligent or less capable or up to no good. And sometimes even um, that idea is instilled in you by your father, you know, by the men in your life. So talk about how you think that has affected the fact that um, it took you up until 29 to really start understanding, oh, this is actually how men work versus just being a suspicious person who would tell herself stories just so she wouldn't have to accept that, oh, I was rejected or maybe he didn't want me. Yeah. Even you just saying that, that just strike a little <laughs> bit of pain inside of me to even process. Yeah, maybe that guy didn't want me as much as I thought he would have wanted me. And, and I don't think, I think a lot of beautiful woman out there. I don't think they're ever processing. <laughs> this guy just wanted pussy from me. That's a hard, hard, harsh, raw truth. Um, and I know our fathers or our parents raise us to be sus suspicious of men to help us be more independent and self-reliant. I know my father did. My father, um, in essence, because he loves me so much, no man was ever good enough for me. There was something wrong 
um, with any man that I could have uh, presented to him. And that may be because maybe from his background as well, when he was young, you know. So it, it, it could be for a lot of women, their, their fathers know other men um, or the, the worst side of men and want to protect their daughters from that. Um, but the unattended consequence of that is, is we raise our women to be just like men. Right? So they become ultra self-reliant. They become a, I don't need no, wo I don't need no man type of woman. Um, and they also um, become a, a form of uh, feminists, you know. Uh, you know, but unintended, I think. Unintended, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think um, black women grow up and say to themselves, I want to be a feminist and I want to be, um, I want to be this woman. I don't need a man. I think trauma causes that as well. Um, so having that preconceived notion that meaning shit, you may attract the same type of man that you fear. Um, and because you're putting that energy out there, you also get it back self-fulfilling, a form of self-fulfilling self prophe prophecy, right? Um, yeah. I think, I think what's, what's tough, you know, because I, I pride myself in balance. <clears throat> and, you know, as a, as a new father, this is stuff I have to think about. And... When I hear like, oh, part of why um, some women are suspicious is because of their dads, I get it because, and I'm sure your boyfriend knows this as well, like most dudes under the age of 30 aren't trying to be serious. Correct. That's the reality, right? Correct. And Correct. fathers know this because at one point they were under the age of 30 and they know how boys think and they know the type of testosterone is coursing through their veins. What's messed up about it, you know, in women's defense is um, your peak period is that under 30. So while you're trying to, like, lock shit down, he's really, you know, I'm trying to, I'm out here in the street, boom, boom, boom. And, you know, so the suspicion is warranted. Yeah. But unfortunately, like you said, it also is a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, like, <laughs> if you could give me advice mm -hmm. as a new father... How can I convey that, you know, when my daughter is a teenager and stuff in a way that's going to click and make sense mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily just lead to her being jaded or lead to her having negative um, expectations of men? Good question. I would say giving her the hard truth early on. Um and actually expanding on that rather than just um, say, be careful about men. Oh, um, you know, saying things like a lot of men under the age of 30 aren't going to be serious. I don't think that's a good statement to make around a young girl, right? Because then that already forms the vision of the majority of men. I think keeping a balance maintaining that balance and that separation. There are good men and there are bad men. There are men that are going to be serious and that are going to take you serious. And there are men that aren't going to take you serious that are going to come here and, you know, use you, um, and lie to you and do this. And, and I think, um, the biggest part is education, education, ed providing that, um, Education for her to know the difference between the two and to be able to identify the difference between the two. Because our fathers wanted to basically repel this from men. Um, we didn't get that education on how to identify good men. Most women don't know how to pick good men. And most women don't know what a good man looks like when that man is standing right in front of them. Why? All they know is how to identify the bad guy. Why, why do you think that is? I would say a mixture of education inside the home, 
uh, well, a mixture of lack of education inside the home and focusing on the negative men. If you only know how to identify the bad, you're only going to uh, attract the bad. You're only going to uh, uh, pick the bad because that's all you know. Right. And maybe if your father wasn't around either to give you that example of the good, um, you might not you still won't know how to pick a good man. Um, I will say this. I think I think you could make a good argument that. Women in mass their kind of default setting is to be attracted to the um, the enigma, the the guy with an edge, right? And, and and it's like you know it makes it worse when you've experienced trauma. Your dad wasn't there, but I, I think there is some t- something to be said for like women's baseline setting is to gravitate towards the pseudo the man's man they don't take no shit and those tend to be the quote-unquote bad boys so can can you help clarify because i have i've been a man for 29 years can you help clarify um why that might be the case or do you think it's not the case why are we attracted to so the basically bad boy? do you think it's nature or do you think it's nurture i think it's nature Mm, okay. <laughs> I, I think it's nature. Okay. And we have to unlearn. Okay. Okay. As we go along. And hopefully we don't unlearn too late. Mm. That although what you're attracted to um is really what you're attracted to, but you can um unlearn what attraction means to you and why you're attracted to that thing you can sit there and i've had to self-reflect so it's possible to self i know that it's possible to self-reflect and dig deep to understand why you're attracted to something um and that's where i think nurture comes into play because you you can you can unlearn that we're not animals right um just because something looks good, that doesn't mean it, it's good. And typically what you're attracted to maybe is not what you, what you need. What you want is not what you need, right? The bad boy, um, although the bad boy, it, there's attractive qualities to that bad boy, but I think it's, it's a sexual attraction. Mostly. So break, this is what I want you to do for me because... I am interested in part of my, I guess, North Star is if I can imbue, I don't even know if I'm using that word properly, the good guys, the solid, the Russell Wilsons Mm -hmm. with some future characteristics Mm -hmm. (laughs) so they can compete with the future and they could, you know what I mean? Um, We can read because I think there is something to learn from everybody. So for the Russell Wilsons of the world, for the good, wholesome dudes that typically get looked over because there isn't that animalistic initial. And we need that. What can they learn from the guys who get that initial animalistic? What can they what piece of their game can they steal? It's it's interesting that you say that, because what I see from the manosphere space is that women are shamed for what they're attracted to, but they're attracted to that for a reason, right? And instead of shaming it, like you said, we should instead maybe teach the men that are not as successful with women to be more well-rounded, to attain just as much success and they will have more success, way more success because then it would lead to more longevity and more families in the black community because we see what black women are attracted to and black women are attracted to the future type because I mean, if black men want to be the future, there's no black man that's looking at future and saying, okay, I don't want to be that guy. I don't look at him like that. <laughs> I but mean, I, but he, I, I he understand. I understand. He but... walks into the room bravado 
right? Whereas maybe Russell has that more, you know, timid type. Uh, I see through it though, <laughs> and that's 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 me. I see through it, but Women I don't. get it. <laughs> Good point. Honestly, that's what that's the difference between men and women. You can look at the future type and see through it and see that pseudo um, masculinity. Women see that and instantly get attracted to that. Instantly, you want to birth a baby for that guy, right? And it's evident. Obviously, we see that. Hey, guys, so, nineteen kids. <laughs> yeah. And we see the little Dirk. We'll we'll see. We see how many women are giving up their womb to these guys and we, we can't shame that maybe we can, just like you said again understand it so let's break it down what the quote-unquote good guys could learn from the future type to be more well-rounded i would think maybe to be more fun mm -hmm. have more <laughs> have more of a personality um, I think because most of these guys spend their time, I think of the nuclear physicist guy. I think most of these guys spent their prime years. That's not their prime years, but women's prime years. Those guys spend those years building themselves, focusing and grinding. And, um, you know, their head is in the books. Yeah. So they come out of that and they come to women and say, okay, well, I have the money. So therefore I'm great, pick me. But that's not the case. Those guys, women have a joke internally. I say, okay, I'll have this guy as my husband and cheat on him. <laughs> because that's not the guy that's going to give you the quality. You don't the find that in and... the same in the same guy at all. Rarely do you, you're lucky. I found it, but you're lucky if you if you find it in the same guy, where the guy is stable, um, able to uh, financially provide for you. It's it, he's protective. Um, he gives you that savage like um, you know personality where he stand his ground and you know he gives you that uh, masculinity type energy. Mostly the guys that are um, well-rounded financially, they don't have that. They don't have the fun quality. They don't have the personality. They don't have the confidence um, to even talk to a girl like a future, like future would, right? Um, because they didn't spend those years practicing that, whereas future might have spent those years practicing given what girls want and studying women and talking to women with confidence that comes with practice right developing a personality that comes with practice that comes with you know actually going outside and doing social things 